What is up guys, Rick Hack is here with some absolutely insane Destiny news for you guys today. Now this is all pertaining to the next expansion coming to Destiny later in the fall of 2016. Now this has been absolutely crazy for me because I was planning on making, believe it or not, a DLC video coming out tomorrow talking about what we actually know about the next Destiny expansion, talking about the best and most established theories for where that expansion may take us, talking about Mars, Europa, and actually the European Dead Zone, but out of absolutely nowhere today, this image gets leaked, someone on Reddit posted this image, and then it got deleted, and everyone has been in an absolute frenzy, and I was just going to actually just add this to the video I was going to make tomorrow. I'd already done research on the three theories, and I was, again, just going to add this and say, well, what does this say about the next DLC? Because this picture at the time... Uh, uh, hadn't yet been confirmed. It came out, there was a lot of speculation, Bungie has not come out uh, at the time I'm recording this and said this is uh, not true, and so no one exactly knew, you know, whether this image was true. Whether this Rise of Iron expansion, as you can see, has any legitimacy. Well, that all changed very recently because Kotaku, a very legitimate news source, has actually done some pretty legitimate stuff in the past with Destiny especially. They put out a big article talking about kind of the messy creation of Destiny, talking about how there was these scrapped raids, talking about all this content that didn't make it into the game. And that's actually, that article has never been denied by Bungie or Activision. And actually the stuff they talked about in that article, a lot of it turned out to be true. So they're kind of Bungie inside sources that were, you know, acknowledged and talked about in that article, again, turned out to be very legitimate. So Kotaku is actually probably one of the best sources for confirming whether this is true or not. And as I said, Kotaku has come out and said they have talked to their insider sources and confirmed that the Rise of Iron is the next expansion. This image is definitively going to be the next expansion for Destiny. And the only thing that's really going to change that I believe is if Activision comes out and definitively says, no, that's not true. But like I've said, Kotaku has been right in the past with their Bungie insider sources. So it's only fair to assume that they're right right now as well. So, let's talk about this Rise of Iron DLC, both analyzing the image released, but not only that, also incorporating some of the research that I had done myself previously in the best theories about where we're going to go. And actually, funny enough, the theory that I was kind of leaning towards actually turned out to be kind of where this image is leading me to believe this DLC is taking place. So that's very interesting. But let's start out with this image. It shows good old Lord Saladin standing there with a massive flaming battle axe. Now, I do believe that this battle axe will be a playable weapon within Destiny. And the simple reason being is because there's already melee weapons introduced into Destiny with the Taken King. The swords have functioned very well and they were able to add a new, entirely new sword just with the April update free DLC. So it's very likely that they can just, what is essentially a reskin of the sword but replace it with a battle axe. Of course, they're probably going to have to make a little bit uh, different animations and they're going to have some unique abilities, but because melee weapons are already functioning very well in Destiny, it would be very easy to add more melee weapons. In this case, a battle axe, but something like, you know, a halliburton, just a normal axe would also be uh, relatively easy to implement into the game. In other words, flaming battle axes confirmed, which, I mean, uh, just saying that makes me so happy for this next DLC. The next thing we notice is the location. Clearly, it's still on Earth. Uh, Lord Saladin is standing just outside of the giant hole in the wall guarding the last city. And we also see these wolves lying around. Now, the wolves are kind of a weird thing. I was originally, when I first saw this, thinking, well, maybe this isn't legit because the wolves seem so out of place. If you think about it, when's the last time you saw an animal in Destiny, aside from just the birds that randomly fly around? You know, you're not seeing animals in Destiny very often, so having these wolves that look exactly like wolves do today kind of seems strange, but I was actually going to argue with myself and then say that the wolves actually make total sense in terms of the artist thought it would be cool. 
because frankly they've got to sell this DLC if they're gonna have this one big poster for the next DLC you throw in some wolves make it look awesome because I think without the wolves it wouldn't look as awesome and that's essentially uh, the path they've chosen they thought what else can we add to this picture and let's add some wolves that'll look cool basically that's what they did and there you have it now, what else do we know about this DLC? Well, firstly, Kotaku said that this would, in fact, be a larger DLC, larger than the initial year one DLCs for Destiny, like The Dark Below and The House of Wolves. And this was kind of backed up by the original announcement of this DLC when Bungie specifically said that they would be introducing a large expansion uh, into the fall rather than just saying they were introducing an expansion. So this would kind of line up for that. It may not be exactly as big as the the Taken King, but it should be somewhere in between uh, the Taken King and again larger than something like the House of Wolves or the Dark Below, which is definitely good news for Destiny fans. Now, there's one more thing that's very interesting that again Kotaku is saying this is the big thing, the next raid. Where is the next raid gonna be? Well, Kotaku is saying that it will be Fallen themed and I know a lot of people were hoping for a cabal raid But it does seem again. This is reported by Kotaku that it is fallen themed now Why is it fallen themed? Well, they actually kind of went into this It seems like the raid the fallen raid in this DLC may have been cut from the house of wolves DLC It was a little weird that the house of wolves DLC didn't have a raid, right? Well, this all makes sense They didn't have enough time to complete it or for whatever reason they cut that raid from that DLC and they're repurposing it in this DLC now This isn't just speculation. This has been proven in the past that Bungie often does this. For example, the best example, the Dreadnought. The keystone of the Taken King DLC, the Dreadnought was supposed to be in the original Destiny game. They had to cut the Dreadnought from original Destiny and then you'll see it end back up into the game with the DLC. That happened a lot. Stuff that was cut in the initial planning stages of the game and they had done some work on it, they went back and actually finished that work and repurposed it for a later DLC. Again, we've seen this happen multiple times in Destiny's history so it totally makes sense that it's happening again right now with this fallen raid. Now, personally, I don't hate the idea of a Fallen Raid. I would have preferred Cabal along with, I know, a lot of other people watching this video, but frankly, as long as it's not Hive or Taken, I'm fine with it. I'm also really interested in learning more about the Fallen. Now, the House of Wolves definitely did do this, but I think that, and I'll kind of talk more about this in the video, um, we're going to get to experience a lot more about the Fallen, especially their presence on Earth. And this segues perfectly into, again, where is this taking place? Now, we, on the poster, we saw Earth. Lord Saladin is standing outside of the wall guarding the last city. So, this actually perfectly kind of coincides with what I was researching and the different fan theories and what had evidence in the video I was planning to make. Well, one of those main theories, there was three main theories I was working on. Firstly, Mars. There's been a lot of hints about Mars. There's been a lot of concept art, really awesome concept art that really expands on the whole Mars experience. And again, this is one of the things that was rumored there uh, was apparently supposed to be more to Mars that was cut uh, Possibly we'll see a return to Mars because again, this is a big DLC It is possible that we are going more than one place Secondly, it was Europa. Europa is one of Jupiter's moons and it's entirely covered by ice. Again, there was concept art done for Europa. It was supposed to be a place you could go in the Taken King apparently, but got cut. That was another huge theory and definitely evidence for Europa as well. Brother Vance specifically mentions Europa and talks about uh, the nine uh, were met there on Europa. So there's, you know, in-game hints and everything. I actually done a previous video just talking about Europa. I think it would be a very good place to go. But the third place I was researching, and it's something that I think people kind of forget about, but it's the European Dead Zone. The European Dead Zone is an area of Earth that was supposed to be in the original Destiny. Somehow it got cut. And actually, if you go back and watch the original trailer, and I'll try to put a screenshot that you can see right here, this forested area... That's, that wasn't in the game. That turned out to be cut. There was a lot of other things that were cut. You actually, if you go back and watch some of the original trailers, you can actually see a spaceship coming down to Saturn. And that again goes into what I was saying with the Dreadnought being cut from the original game. But what I was saying here again about the European Dead Zone, very interesting that this made it into the trailer. 
Like, this is playable space. You see that player walking around in a forest, and that all, who knows, it kind of just evaporated into thin air. Now, the European Dead Zone was supposed to get rumored, uh, featured more predominantly in the Taken King, very interestingly, but it didn't really. You didn't get to go to a new area of Earth, did you? There was no European Dead Zone. Or was there? Because there actually is portions of the European Dead Zone that did make it into the Taken King in terms of maps. These maps that you're seeing right here, they're PvP maps and they take place, you know, when you load them up. Widow's Court is the best example. It'll say the location it says European Dead Zone, which is very interesting and it got me thinking, you know, what if they were working on European Dead Zone with the Taken King? They had to cut it for whatever reason, but they'd done some of these areas they'd already constructed constructed, maybe not enough for a PvE area, but enough to make these PvP maps, and that makes perfect sense in my mind. They're working on it, they worked enough on it that they had some playable areas, but they had to cut it in terms of PvE at least, but they're able to repurpose some of this content for PvP maps. And now we see Lord Saladin on Earth. And I was kind of speculating because, you know, one of the reasons why before I was favoring Europa, Europa was the, again, the frozen moon of Jupiter, is I don't think going back to Mars would be a great idea in terms of marketing. Having to sit there in front of the marketing department and say, well, this DLC, we're going back to Mars. And they're going to say, well, you're already there, right? And they're going to go, yeah, but this time it's better, you know? That's going to be hard to market. Go back to Mars. You've already been there, but trust us, it's better. It would be easier to market somewhere completely new, like Europa. In fact, if you go back to some of the marketing done on the Taken King, they kept talking about the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought, the Dreadnought, that was the main, you know, selling point of that DLC. You get to go somewhere completely new, and that completely new somewhere is a hive, you know, massive ship, which was awesome. So going somewhere new is a great selling point for a DLC, unless you're talking about Earth, because you can make it work with Earth. You might not necessarily go somewhere new, but going somewhere like Earth is very powerful when selling a DLC. Having the tagline, Take Back Earth, for example, that is an awesome tagline. Just really focusing on trying to liberate more parts of Earth from the Fallen, that's going to draw a lot more people in and that's going to be a, a huge factor in marketing this next DLC. So the fact that the location of this poster is Earth, and the fact that the next raid is apparently Fallen themed, and the Fallen have a huge presence on Earth, specifically the Fallen have overrun the House of Devils, I think, uh, actually specifically, have overrun the European Dead Zone, which, coincidentally, they were apparently working on enough to create two PvP maps for the Taken King, but that also got cut. I wouldn't be surprised if we finally get to explore more places on Earth with this DLC with the Rise of Iron expansion. I would argue that it also makes sense for the narrative. You've been doing so much stuff as a guardian, so much, you know, powerful things you've been doing to enhance humanity's capabilities, taking down, you know, a hive god, for example, taking down, you know, the brothers on Mars and all this stuff, even though the brothers were in the hive ship, whatever, but you've been doing all of this stuff to fight humanity's enemies. It makes sense that maybe you've advanced humanity's strength enough that you can finally start taking back some of the areas on Earth. And that would kind of lead better into Destiny 2. In Destiny 2, perhaps you've liberated more of Earth, or perhaps even all of Earth, and then from that point you can start exploring more of the galaxy, and perhaps even going further beyond our own galaxy to explore maybe some of the Cabal homelands or what have you, or the next galaxy over. That, of course, is all speculation, but I would again point to the puzzle pieces of the posters on Earth, the next raid is Fallen, and European Dead Zone was apparently cut from the Taken King, but yet still got, you know, somewhat done. Those puzzle pieces all fit together and all point us in the direction that this DLC will take place in possibly the European Dead Zone. And again, from a marketing perspective, the new Destiny expansion, Rise of Iron, Take Back Earth. That's a great selling point right there. That's a great line right there. Bungie, you can take that. That's free. That's on me. Now, the last thing I want to mention as this video wraps up is just, you know, when I was doing my research looking into the other fan theories, looking into Mars, looking into Europa, they were very interesting. There was very promising, very interesting leads talking about those locations. And, you know, there was even kind of hints towards those locations. For example, uh, some of the new PlayStation exclusive armor added into the game with the April update specifically mentions Mars 
and Jupiter, which of course Europa is Jupiter's moon. So very, very interesting. But again, this, you know, rise of iron doesn't necessarily point us in that direction, especially with the fallen themed raid. However, it is entirely possible. If this is a large DLC, there's no reason to think that we can't go to the European dead zone and Europa or Mars is expanded as well. In fact, the Fallen do now have a presence on Mars ever since the Taken King DLC, which is very interesting. I remember doing those Fallen on Mars quests, so that is a possibility. Now, that is going to be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, and if you found this informative, please remember to help me out by simply rating or sharing this video. Now, if you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickHackus. That's going to be linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day. Now I've heard more and more players complain that the new leveling system installed into Destiny with the April update is just too easy. I mean most players are sitting around at the new max light level of 335 bored out of their skulls, right? Wrong. I think that the leveling system as it is right now in Destiny is the best it's ever been and I'm campaigning for it to stay for Destiny expansions in the future and for Destiny 2.